so as part of being a financial corporation, we make a report to the parish of last year's uh, report and this year's budget. On behalf of the Finance Council this morning, we are privileged to have with us Chuck Franzis, who will do that for us. Chuck? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Chuck. I've been accused of taking too long on this, so I'll try to hurry up this morning. Uh, representing the Finance uh, Committee, which is made up of Finance Council, which is made up in St. Mary's of Joe Sheridan, John Carosa, Barb Goodwin, and myself. And in St. Benedict's, Greg Andrews, Nan Latier, Deb Mellinson, and Jan James. Um, how are we doing as a Schuyler Catholic community financially? The churches and grounds of both parishes are in fairly good shape inside now. We need a little attention here and there, but nothing real noticeable. Cemeteries look good and are well maintained. But plenty of daily missalettes and hymnals in the pews. We get a response from Father Paul or the deacons or staff when we have a need. Baptisms, weddings, funerals, confessions are performed regularly, basically when we need them. Daily Mass and three weekend Masses go almost every week without a hitch. We have full-time staff dealing with our parish community business and mission needs, including the sacramental preparation and faith formation for our youth. We house the food bank at St. Mary's, including a, a, a substantial donation. And both parishes are blessed to have volunteers that do special fundraisers. We have no capital reserves as such. We do have modest savings of both churches. Our obligations are fairly typical for a corporation. We have payroll and benefits. We have utilities, building maintenance and insurance, cemeteries, a lot of trimming done by Camp Monterey inmates, by the way, so uh, we're not positive that's going to be available to us in the future. And diocesan mandates and requests. A lot of people have asked me about the diocesan obligations. Uh, the Catholic Ministry Appeal, the Catholic Courier, and the parish subsidy for Catholic schools and four parish building funds, both established goals for each of the parishes. Then you are contacted directly to give donations. In Rochester at the diocesan offices, when they tally the totals donated, they then turn back to the parish and said, you owe us the balance of what the goal was. We don't have a choice. We pay that out of the general fund. So don't ever think that, that you've done your share and we're all done. You probably have done your share, but the parish still has to support the balance. And I might add, when I used to be on the, on the council before, I always thought that was pretty hefty. Here at St. Mary's, our total budget for the 12-13 fiscal year was $358,578. In weekly collections, we raised $297,938. We were short $60,640. Now on the expenditure side, the staff did a great job and only spent $328,227, coming in under budget of $30,352. So they did a great job managing our budget. They didn't spend it just because they had it. However, with, with the special donations and fundraisers, we ended up raising $35,982, therefore, we ended up in the black of $5,693, but only because of the special donations and fundraisers. Those fundraisers are the Italian Festival uh, bake sale, dinners that we have from time to time, the bazaar, center rent, funerals, weddings, and, and as I stated before, some of our special collections. If we put these special collections at $35,981, and a capital reserve every year instead of paying our bills, at the end of 15 years, we would have $539,726 in capital reserve plus interest. Now, we don't always get $35,000 annually, but should we maintain that goal, we would have quite an accumulation of capital reserve. The reason I chose 15 years is that's the next time we should be prepared to paint the church inside now. Taking what we are paying 
this year for painting the church inside out. We are going to start painting the church after the Christmas holiday interior. It, with inflation, it'll be about $225,000. That means if we could set that money aside, we'd be $300,000 to the good. And we wouldn't have to do a special fundraiser to do what shouldn't be capital work anyway. It should be operation and maintenance. If the staff hadn't been frugal and had come in under budget by $30,000, we would have had to go into reserves to make up the difference between the $60,000 we were under in collections the 35,000 we raised in special uh, donations, we would have had to take 25,000 out of our savings. And we shouldn't be using savings to pay our bills. That principal interest should be used for rainy days. It should be used for uh, unanticipated emergencies. We have uh, several bequests, and most of them don't earmark any special use of the money. It's just left to the church, for the church to use as they want. And that's where we gain our savings. However, some requests come with strings attached. And one in particular, and I won't mention any names, it's not, it's not material to the name, but they, have, they gave us the amount of money that's put into a CD. The interest annually can only be used to have masses for that family. Well, guess what? The interest these days on a CD isn't very much, so we barely can tweak out a mass or two for them. But those are the type of bequests that wouldn't allow us to do what we're doing now. So I'm not saying you shouldn't give those. I'm just saying that we're lucky we have many that don't have that earmark. This is what you don't want to hear. We were 20% short on our goals for donations this year to meet our budget. We should anticipate a 3% inflationary rate for this current fiscal year. We're asking to raise the income from weekly donations by 23% or $68,000. Um, that's a lofty goal. I know it's not easy times, but that's our goal, and we're going to talk more about it here as I go on. A real brief rendition of St. Benedict's, because I know some of you are probably here from St. Benedict's. Their budget was $60,822. They raised in donations $55,425, which meant they were $53.97 short. Uh, their special uh, donations were only $182. They did underspend their budget by $4,200. So in the, in the end, we had to put about $950 in from savings to just pay the bills. So they, they are dipping into their savings just to maintain uh, status quo. Now, I think they just had a bad year on special fundraisers and probably in the normal year they would have covered that. Our goal for St. Benedict's this coming year is a 9% increase, which is again, the difference between what they needed and what they collected, plus 3% or about $7,300. In summary, we're not meeting our goals through donation income. We're not prepared for unexpected or unanticipated <coughs> expenses, and we need to uh, be prepared for that. How can we be God's stewards and raise more income? Obviously, we can ask all of you who are regular attendees of Mass to give more. Um, what was the last time you, you made an increase in your donations? Has, has it been some time, or do you regularly increase it based on inflation or special service needs you need from the church? Uh, I'd, like, I'd like everyone to think about the services they receive from the parish and adjust their donation according to a service, not just as a weekly donation. Think about what you get from the church and donate according to what you receive, not just as a, a regular donation. We could get our friends and relatives and neighbors that are members of our parish to attend Mass on Sunday. Not only would we be spiritually more strong to have them here with us, I'm assuming they'd reach in their pocket and throw something in the basket. That could be a huge, a huge help, and we'll talk about that a little more. Another thing that uh, I'm getting of the age now where I go on extended vacations on the south, are we maintaining our weekly donation while we're getting out of the cold weather? You know, the, the church doesn't have a salary like most of us do. So think about trying to do something to maintain your donations while you're not here, because we still have needs here uh, to pay the fuel bill and keep keep the uh, creditors a bit. 
We could look at more fundraisers. It takes a lot of volunteer time. I don't know how much more we can squeeze out of people. And I don't want to do a golf tournament like every other not for profits doing because I think they're saturated and it's hard to get people to dig in any deeper. So I, I'd prefer not to go that way. Here's one thing I thought about. I, I get a medium of donuts almost every day. And on occasion, I've been down at the hotel every week to have a Manhattan or two. Uh, that's two and ten dollars. If I didn't do one each each week, that's about one hundred bucks a week I can put in the, in the uh, collection basket. Think about that. I'm thinking about it too. I don't decide. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman right here to my in back of me has been a great pastor. We've had him eleven and a half years almost. We may not have him this time this year. He may be gone. And the diocesan is going to be looking to put another priest here to be our pastor going forward. We have a shortage of priests. I, I don't know if the priests have a lot to say about where they go. I do know they look into it and they give their opinion to the bishop. So I'm, I'm an average priest. I don't like to come up here and ask for money. So I'm looking at the parishes that have an opening and I'm saying, hmm, these parishes are financially sound, I wouldn't have to go back for money there. And the Scottish Catholic community isn't meeting their goals. Most priests don't mind the challenge of, of creating more faith community, but they're not crazy about fundraisers to pay the bills. So be thinking about how we poise ourselves going forward this next year to attract a priest. We've done a good job with our two parish uh, properties looking good. Now let's try to improve the bottom line and make it even more attractive. I uh, told a story in, in last night and this morning about Father Albert Shannon came here to raise money to build the center. And he did a very effective job. He's a great priest, good guy. For those of you that were altar boys, he uh, pinched our cheeks if we didn't do what we were supposed to do on the altar. He, and he was a great, I really cherished the time I had with him. But he basically, was a guy that came up here on the altar and no qualms about saying, dig in deeper. And we could have that type of priest if that's what the bishop feels we need. More importantly, besides losing services, besides not doing the program and the faith community program that we want to do, we can lose our sense of who we are and who God is calling us to be by letting the, uh, the, the church struggle and, and maintaining itself. What do we need to do? We need to increase our attendance and participation at our churches. If 300 more people total, that's, that's an entire, I'm talking about entire families, not individual families. 300 more people total came to both St. Benedict's and St. Mary's. And each of them donated two dollars. So, so a family of three comes into the church on Sunday morning and they put six dollars in the collection we would raise $31,000 in extra income just from the, the uh, donation basket. If all of us who attend regularly, and, I, and again, all of us is the entire family, not the, not the head of the household, put $2 each in that basket, we raise $45,000. If you take the goal numbers that I quoted earlier, it's a total of 76,000. Guess what? That's what we just raised in extra income with those two actions. Please consider that. Please consider the impact that it has on our ability to go forward and reduce the number of special financial campaigns and, and pay our routine cost of uh, operations. In Corinthians 9, they, it reads, you will be enriched in every way for your great generosity. Uh, we need to become less dependent on special donations. We need to be more dependent on routine income. We could focus our capital fundraisers on really doing capital work instead of doing painting. Painting should not be part of a big fundraiser to make improvements to the facilities. It should be set aside, it should be done automatically as needed, and it should be up uh, We are going to have to pay more. The cemeteries are actually a separate corporation, but we're going to have to start subsidizing them from the general fund if we lose the shock incarceration troops. They do an awful lot of our handwork up there, all the trimming, 
all the special uh, repairs. We, we have mowers and we take care of the mowing, but we don't, we wouldn't have everything trimmed up and looking as good without them. If we have to hire more labor to do that in the coming years, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to subsidize the cemetery corporations out of our donations. So think about that too. We could also increase our outreach to the community in our, in our mission. I've been talking, I'm a nuts and bolts guy, I'm an engineer. I've been talking about basically paying the bills and doing what we have to do. But we also have a mission. We also have a faith community we have to uh, not only maintain, but improve. We could add more program if we had the funds to do it. If we had the funds we could depend upon to do it. Um, in Isaiah 58, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Last week in Deacon Tom's homily, he, thought he gave a story about Mother Teresa uh, approaching a very successful sports franchise partners, uh, requesting money for her program. And when she did receive a positive response, she started with, let's pray. And she prayed and she said, okay. And she started asking them again for the same amount of donation she'd asked for the first time. She didn't reduce it. And they turned her down the second time, and this continued until they finally gave in and said, Sister, Mother Teresa, here's the money you requested. Here's my challenge. Let's pray. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chuck. Chuck was at all the masses this weekend. I'm very grateful for his time and his representing the Finance Council for the community. He failed to tell you that one of the reasons he did not want to do the golf tournament is that he see me play, and he just didn't want to take that back. And um, history repeats itself because Father Albert Shannon became pastor of St. Mary's in Waterloo, my parish, and I was an altar boy for him there. So. We both have uh, some good memories of Father Shannon. So please take Chuck's words to heart and, and think about what you can do, what you have been doing, and pray about it. Thank you. We also have some announcements before we, we begin Mass this morning. There are some surveys still at the end of the pew about adult faith formation, so please take a few moments to fill them out and put them in the collection basket. Uh, Deacon Rick DeMars wants to increase our adult faith formation, and he would like your input. Friday is a Holy Day of Obligation, the Feast of All Saints. The anticipated Mass is Thursday, the 31st. It's at 4.30 p.m. at St. Benedict's. It's a little bit earlier time, uh, because a lot of people are going to want to take children and grandchildren trick-or-treating. So the anticipated Mass is Thursday at 4.30 p.m. at St. Benedict's. On Friday, the Masses are here at St. Mary's, 7 a.m. and 12.05 p.m. Daylight Savings Time begins next weekend. Please remember to set your clock back one hour Saturday evening. Please see the information or the information on the back shelf regarding Operation Christmas Child, better known as the Shoebox Ministry. Catholic Daughters will be hosting a special Mass on November 10th to honor our veterans living and deceased. If you have an update to the list in the bulletin flyer, please send updates to the name or email listed on the flyer. Once again, our thanks to everyone who helped in any way at our recent harvest dinner. We could not do it without you. There's more information in the bulletin flyer. There is a book of requests at the back of the church to record your special intentions. We pray for these intentions daily. And here in the Schuyler Catholic community, we have a custom at the end of Mass. At the end of the recessional hymn, we kneel and silently pray three Hail Marys for the next one among us to be called home by God. We invite you to please join us in that prayer this morning. Please make sure that your cell phones are placed in a silent mode during Mass. Our opening hymn this morning is number 744 in the Gathered Hymnal. Our readings begin on page 137 in the Sunday's Word, Miss Elect. And at this time, I invite you to join us in our call to worship again.
once again at God's invitation. It's our choice, Jesus tells us today, whether to pray from our hearts or for show. Let us take the time that we need today to search our hearts and find at least a small part of our inmost selves that we can offer up to God in prayer. This can be a first step, perhaps, in deepening our relationship with the God who loves each of us so profoundly. Now let us turn to each other and offer a sign of welcome. <laughs> Receive our prayer. You are seated. 
seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Said by my young friend's court for dismissal for their own literature to learn. We have a couple up the side, we got one up the middle. Oh, we got more coming up the middle. Good morning, how are you? You're doing good? Awesome. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How awesome. You know what? We hear a story in the gospel today about two guys. And one guy says, you know what? I try to do everything right. But it's not from his heart. And even though the other guy doesn't always do the right thing, he's honest about it in his heart. He says, God, please forgive me. I'm sorry. So Jesus is trying to teach us how to be people Heart, boys and girls of the heart. So as you go and you hear stuff in your mind today, also ask Jesus to bring in your heart. So may God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we'll see you guys later.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteous with righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. In generous spirit, pay homage to the Lord. In generous spirit, 
pay homage to the Lord. Be not sparing of free will gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance. And pay your tithes in a spirit of joy. Give to the Most High as He has given to you, generously, according to your needs. So we hear in verses 12 and 14 and 16 through 18 that the Lord hears the cry of the poor, the oppressed, the broken, the downtrodden, that when we're struggling, God hears us. But what does He want from us? He's saying, look, I give to you generously, can you do the same? It's this constant back and forth, like Jesus taught in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us as we forgive. So God is saying, learn from me and do as I do to you. So to have a generous heart, to have a spirit of joy. In our brokenness, and our downtroddenness, and our, and our pain, yes, to cry out to God and have confidence that he'll hear us. But then, to look at those around us. Can we do for, God, for them as God has done for us? It's the disposition of the heart. What's the difference between the two guys in today's gospel? The first guy, the Pharisee, he hasn't done anything wrong. He says, you know, I say my prayers, I give my donations, my tithes, I, I do all the stuff right. Second guy's a tax collector and an admitted sinner. Yet Jesus says the second guy is the one that goes home justified. The second guy, the sinner, the tax collector, is the one whose prayer is heard. Why not the first guy? Did he do everything right? Well, it wasn't from the heart. Externally, we can do everything perfectly, but the most important thing is what's going on in our hearts. So when we're called to give to those around us, our time, our giftedness, our treasures, to be people of generous hearts and joyful spirits, because God has been good to us. And when we're in need, to cry out from our hearts to God. God, I want you to help me. Whatever you take away from Mass today, whatever it is that strikes you, that, that plants itself in your mind, that, that is working inside you, take it to your prayer and see what your heart says about it. May we profess our faith. I believe in the one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial of the Father, through him all things remain. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people of faith, we approach the Lord now, asking His help in our lives. For the leaders of our church, that they continue to pursue the preferential option for the poor in all choices they make, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For 
for those who guide the nations that they will choose diplomacy over violence to resolve their differences. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are oppressed, who are unjustly imprisoned, and who are tortured and abused, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the priests in our church, may they be strong, loving, and wise ministers to all of the faithful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who have died this past year, and for those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, for those in hospitals or at their homes, and our residents in the Seneca View, the Falls Home, and any other nursing facilities, especially for Carol Bauer, Clara Butler, Babies Morgan and Robert Jansen, Louis Mello, Bill Roberts, Paula Chamberlain, and Barbara Gilmore. And for those names that are listed in the bulletin on the prayer plaque and the intentions in the book of requests, that our love and our prayers will bring them the healing and the peace of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, that they may all share in the joy of the eternal banquet. And for Mary and Frank Pinto, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions privately spoken in our hearts. That they will be heard and granted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you are never outdone in generosity. So as we ask you to help us in our needs, Remind us of the needs of those around us. Inspire us to work to build your kingdom. You live and reign as our God forever and ever. Amen.
sisters and my sacrifice for yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make for your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we now acclaim. Sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. So in the way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Yeah. A mystery of faith Celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, Benedict, and all the saints, we may dare to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. God is a generous, loving Father, and so with this confidence we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them. Let what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song this morning is number 718, We Are Called. Thank you.